high outside in the air. Marcus Conti reporting. After a sleepless night of watching the debate, the master debaters, oh my, oh my, oh me. I have to watch it so you don't have to. So, uh, number five, number five, World Series number five of the big Democrats, 10 million people watching, estimated. You had, uh, you had Rachel Maddow. Oh, Rachel and Andrea Mitchell. Oh, all the big guns. The media brought all the big guns to tear down the the, the progressive insurgents. Uh, let's talk about Russiagate. <laughs> so, so Mark Scott, you're reporting on the uh, debate. Right? I, I'm going to try to stay big picture because I tell you, I was watching... And as I was going from character to character, I felt like this, I got to say, I felt like this sinking feeling, like, like we're being ripped off again. You know, I had that ripped off feeling like this could be so good and this could be so important and so pivotal for our country. But instead, we're forced to view at least six people on that stage that have absolutely no chance of winning and are not not only not contributing to the discourse, the positive discourse, but dragging the discourse down into directions that the American people genuinely don't want to hear. Hello, squirrel. Hello, squirrel. Hello, squirrel. What's your name? You live in the park? Do you live in the park? Is that your tree? You pay rent for that tree or is it free? Are you a socialist squirrel or are you a communist, a capitalist? Hmm. He's not very talkative. I'm out in nature learning from nature. I'm, a, I'm questioning nature. You are right? like a fucking squirrel, man. So there might be sniffling and there might be snot today because it's cold out. It's about 40 degrees. Really, it's, uh, I'm dressed right. I got two hats, three, three underwear, <laughs> a couple of, a couple of coats on. Don't fuck around with the cold, man. So I digress. So the squirrel took away my breath. It took away my stride. So the sinking feeling of... <clears throat> Having democracy, having the, the taste of 2016 corruption, cheating, still in my mouth to see 10 people, maybe two of which have any talent and any credibility and any possibility of beating Trump, jammed on a stage with eight idiots. All right. So you know who the winner was, the winner in my view. I'll talk about, let's go through each one of them piece by piece. Again, the I'll get rid of the shit sandwiches first. Cory Booker, he got a good line in with uh, Biden. He said uh, he challenged Joe Biden on legalized marijuana. And Joe Biden is, is against legalizing marijuana. And Cory Booker says, you must have been high when you made that decision. <laughs> it was a great line, man. He got a lot of chuckles out of that one. Uh, entertain me, right? Entertain me. Come on, man. What the fuck? I'm, I'm sitting there in my chair eating my grapes. I, I couldn't help but critique one contestant after the other on their inability to understand the frame. Hey, pause. Watch. I'll give you a timely pause. Right? So I'm talking and I'm walking and I'm talking. And then I make my point. I make my point, right? The idea of a timely pause, the, the idea of, of understanding the medium by which you are engaging. Right, now, okay, they're politicians. They're career politicians. They don't spend their time acting. They don't understand the frame. But you know who does? 
the orange monster, Trump. <laughs> That's why he won. What? Trump doesn't. Trump doesn't get up there and this is advice for the Democrats. Pay attention. Trump doesn't get up there and 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 argue numbers and facts and and figures and and policies and no. He says. We've never been so good. We've never had it so good. Aren't we having fun? Right? And he does that. He does that. He plays the frame. He's a trained actor. He's a, he's a professional guy. Not the best at it. I mean, if you want to really look at the masters, you look at someone like Jim Carrey or, you know, the comedians that, you know, take the, take the frame or Eddie Murphy, you know, the, the comics, the stand-up comics. I take it to a new level. And I kept watching and saying, God, these people are so dry. They don't know what the American people want. Right? Because the American people don't care about the, 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 um, the incidental, uh, the, the little, con you know, controversies, the, the, the LARPing, <laughs> for lack of a better term, the Washington LARPing, who's screwing who? And they don't care about that. They care about what's in it for me. What's in it for me? What do I... I sat here for two hours. I got no grapes left. Right? And, and what did I get out of this? What did I learn from this? And what is in it for me and my little darling children and my, my lovely wife and my husband or whatever? What do I get out of it? Right? What, is, what does the country get out of it? That's what people are waiting to hear, right? They don't want to hear, they, they're so tired of the platitudes and, and politician talk and, 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 and people know a phony when they see it. They know a fucking phony. They know that Cory Booker would step over 200 blacks to get to that one white guy that could give him a break. And the same could be said about Camilla Harris. I don't like either one of them. And it's not because they're black. It's because they pretend to be black. <laughs> is that possible? Yeah, it is. Uh, they're, 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 they're politicians who now when the moment comes, they want to go back to their roots and say, look at me, I'm, I'm you. Uh, it's phony. Uh, you know, and that's what, and that's what Trump... That's why Trump won. There's a guy walking behind me. Uh-oh. Gave me a dirty look. It must be one of the secret LARPers following me, following me around in the park. They threatened to come and get me and follow me. <laughs> so, let's keep going. I, uh, okay, so Corey, I took Cory Booker. Har Camilla Harris falling like a rock. God damn it, she's so bad. She gave me the worst feeling of all of them, where I looked and I said, man, what a tragic day if, she's, if she were standing on that podium getting sworn in as the president. You know, that, although that could never happen and won't happen, I think that's a guarantee at this point. But what a day if America would be so stupid as to fall for that line of shit, right? Or, what did she say? Uh, he, there's a criminal in the White House. He's a criminal. <laughs> the Democrat, and then she defended Hillary Clinton when it, when Tulsi Gabbard attacked her. Uh, so Hillary Clinton, the biggest criminal in the history of American politics, recent, modern, is calling Trump a criminal, making that the foundation of her just a, a total, a total. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, Trump got punked, she said. Let's stay with Camilla Harris. She's funny. Trump got punked. <laughs> when she was talking about um, Kim Jong-un. Trump does a thing that no other American president has ever done, which is to try to figure out what the hell's going on in North Korea. And he caters to Kim Jong-un's you know, better angels, his egoism to bring Kim Jong Un into the spotlight. Trump played him like a, you know, played him like a doormat. You know, played him like a flute. 
and he got he got Kim Jong Un to come out of his shell. Right? There's a car coming. Come here for peace of mind. You get run over. Right? And 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 Camilla Harris is using that as a weakness. He got punked. Trying to cater to the blacks. Punked. <laughs> Didn't the whites start punk? I don't know. All right, punk rock. So, Camilla Harris, shit sandwich, goodbye. Get off the stage. All right? Again, it's just, the whole thing is stop Bernie. Bernie won. Why? Because Bernie sets the narrative. Bernie sets the tone. Bernie is the reason why there's 10 people on that stage and not two. Because they don't want Bernie to talk. Right? He got the, I don't know, he got, I mean, again, it's just two hours, ten people. It was, they gave a, an enormous amount of time to the next shit sandwich, which was Amy Klobuchar. And absolutely nobody. Excuse me. And absolute nobody. Amy Klobuchar, she shakes. Literally shakes when she's speaking like this, right? You see her the wave in her hair waving like this. Like fucking shake. Come on, man. Take a pill or something. I got to look at you shaking and, and doing the, the closed finger point. And then I said this and, and then and they point like this to, so that they don't point the finger at anybody, but they close the finger and point. She's doing the politician close the finger pointing thing. Fucking get off of the stage, you phony. Be authentic. What else did I write about Amy Klobuchar? Impeach! Impeach the bitch! Trump sucks up to Vladimir Putin. Doing that Red Scare shit. Nothing. You can't have any policy with Amy Klobuchar. Total shit sandwich. Waste of time clogging up the stage. <laughs> um, Cory Booker. Black churches! Cory Booker, he had that one, he, he had that one hit and laugh with Biden, and then he flopped on the wealth tax. People in this country want a wealth tax. Right? That's, what Elizabeth, that's where Elizabeth Warren shines. You take two cents on the dollar from the billionaire class, and you funnel that back to the American people and policies for the people. That's one way of doing it. But again, the essence of cleaning up the corruption in, in Washington, D.C., is to get the money out of politics. Uh, so, and that's Bernie Sanders. So, uh, Andrew Yang lost me last night. I'll tell you, he's a he's a charismatic guy. He's he's I like I like him. I think he would be a great cabinet member. But he said something. Russia undermined our democracy. He's a RussiaGate guy. Right? He he in in the five minutes he got to speak, he talked about RussiaGate. Please, man. Russiagate? Andrew Yang, you believe that shit? He lost me there, you know? So, um, Tom Steyer, money in politics. Right? Big, tall guy, billionaire. He's talking about, he used to work in big oil, and now he wants to expose big oil. I mean, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. But he has no chance of winning. He's, he's not... He doesn't have the character that people are looking for. Trump changed everything. Bernie changes everything. You have to be of the people or it ain't going to work. Trump is not of the people, but he can convince you because he's a skilled actor. Right? Tom Steyer, forget about it. Um, who else? Buddha Judge. I don't see what people get in this guy, right? He's a he's a a mayor of a town with he got eleven thousand votes total in his whole life, and then he tried to run at the state level and lost. You know, he's he's got is America ready for a gay man, a gay thirty-seven year old Indiana mayor, with with no track record just because he's articulate, and 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 he could. He, he pretends to be of the people. Meanwhile, he's totally a corporate shill. Totally for sale, taking money from the, from the billionaire class. You think America's going to vote for that? Do you know what Trump would do to that guy? Yeah, I mean, it would be... That would be the... 
I don't know if that would be a better show than watching him beat up, uh, uh, beat up. I mean, Joe Biden, he'll step on and spit on and shit on. But I don't know what would be funnier. Trump versus Buttigieg or Trump versus Elizabeth Warren. And having Trump Pocahontas every 30 seconds. <laughs> God, I mean, I, I, you know, one, one side of me wants Trump to be, in pre be president forever because it's so goddamn funny. But the real side of me wants Bernie Sanders because the country is hurting, you know. And, uh, you know, the economic numbers are, are disgusting in terms of abject poverty and people settling for less in this country. You know, 60% of the country doesn't have $400 to their name. 80% of the people living paycheck to paycheck. People have no savings. They don't, they don't take trips anymore. It's shameful, you know, and Sanders represents an, uh, an opportunity to change that, you know, so. So uh, Joe Biden was the loser of the night. Why? Because, <laughs> oh, you know, what? I, I had an analogy, right? When I was driving through, um, I was driving down, down through D.C. Uh, and down into Virginia a uh, couple of weeks ago. I made videos about it. I didn't really say say much. I was kind of on, on I stopped in DC, but I was mostly on just a vacation, kind of unwind a little bit. And I was looking at some stuff down there. I was just visiting. And um, but I remember traveling through DC. That's where uh, uh, Delaware, excuse me. That's where where uh, Joe Biden is from. He's from Delaware. And when you travel down on the highway for, in Delaware, when you get into Delaware, you pay a four dollar toll. To cross a bridge, right? Four dollars, and then you're in Delaware for like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and then to get out, there's another four dollar toll. So, four dollars in, 10 minutes, and four dollars out. That's Joe Biden. Right? I said to myself, "Oh, he's from that state, Delaware, right?" <laughs> four dollar Joe, right? It was the perfect analogy because. He's, there's nothing in between. It's just pay me a little ride and pay me again. Joe Biden. So uh, the, the night was for Joe Biden to lose. The, the uh, mythical, theoretical, mainstream media frontrunner is a total shit sandwich, stretch-faced Joe. Nothing to offer the American people other than I was the vice president of the first black president. Right, hold on a second. All right, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> he offered nothing, and lost. I right, so he's slipping like a rock. Uh, uh Tulsi Gabbard uh, banged the shit out of Camilla Harris. One good shot. Tulsi presents well. She's. She's firm. I don't see her as a president. I see her as dropping and supporting Bernie Sanders, which she, she's a great attack dog. She's like a sniper. And she went after um, Buttigieg. She went after Pete Buttigieg and, and said, Pete Buttigieg made a comment, uh, I want to send in the uh, military, I want to use the military to, to fight the drug cartels in Mexico. <laughs> Rather than legalize drugs, Pete Buttigieg wants to send in the military. Right? And, and Tulsi Gabbard called him out on it, and Pete Buttigieg totally flopped. So Tulsi Gabbard, the sniper, gets points for that. I put her at, I, get, I guess I put her at, in fourth place. I put it Bernie, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren. Um, I, I don't even know. I mean, I don't even know who's third, fourth, and fifth anymore. To me... Now, I cannot even put Biden at the top of the list anymore. It's just, he's $4 Joe, you know? $4 in, let me, I'll talk for 10 minutes, $4 out. He's Obama. He's white Obama. Um, Elizabeth Warren. Professorial. She starts every sentence with, look. Look. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> she asks the question. Look. Look, looky, looky. <laughs> Roll the tape back, you'll see what I mean. So Elizabeth Warren is the 
the in the progressive community, she's the she's the dime store phony to Bernie Sanders. That's how people are viewing her, right? She's why would you vote for Elizabeth Warren when you could have Bernie Sanders? You could have the real deal, right? That's what people are saying, and that's what I see. I see an articulate woman. She rattles off the facts like nobody else. She's clearly the smartest professorial person up there. She can memorize everything and spit it back out at you. But the fact is, she she flips and flops. Uh, I didn't follow. I don't follow it. Her intricate policies that closely because it bores me. But people are saying that her health, her, her Medicare for all is a scam. That it's it's Medicare for some, right? So. I, I still put her as second because of her presentation and her roots in the progressive movement and maybe, maybe, maybe her ability to keep talking about that and not sell out again, right, as Bernie Sanders vice president. Right? And it brings us to Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. Bernie is the rock star on the stage. I wrote the damn bill. Uh, Bernie's, it's Bernie's to lose. Bernie won the last time. Bernie has to do the unbelievable chore of winning a second time. That's what Bernie Sanders is, is tasked with. He has to win the Democratic primary twice. He did it once and got cheated. And that's technically a win. Hold on a second. <laughs> ah, it's just cold out cold out my nose runs so Bernie Sanders please 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 pretty please with sugar right they're gonna cheat him again right they're cheating him they're crowding the stage that's what I saw I saw Bernie Sanders get his 10 minutes of fame trying to push push his way to the front of the pack right that's all you can do is try to argue your way in you look like an argument argumentative old man in terms of his health I think that's off the table. They didn't ask him about his heart attack <laughs> again for the, for the 80th time. So, income and wealth inequality, money and politics, single payer universal health care, de escalate the insurgency wars because we don't really have an enemy. That's all Bernie Sanders. Every bit of it. Everything that comes out of Elizabeth Warren's mouth is a result of Bernie Sanders. 40-year career. Everything that, that Tulsi Gabbard talks about in terms of everything really, even the military stuff, is Bernie Sanders. You got to stop the insurgency wars. That's Bernie Sanders talking about that, you know, years and years and years ago. Climate change, Bernie Sanders. Okay. Money and politics, Bernie Sanders overturned Citizens United. Okay. So he wins again, right? But does it matter? Does it change anything? Let's talk about that. Does, did anything change last night? I don't think so. I, I think that, I think this, I think that the polls are still fake. The superdelegates are still rigged for the establishment candidate. All right. What else? Rigged polls. The, 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 let's talk about the electronics of the machines. Nothing has changed. The gerrymandering, or whatever that means. I don't even know what it means. I know what it means. Really, I do. No, I do. I know what, I know what it means. I'm going to look it up when I get home. <laughs> no, but the, 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 again, the rules, the rules of the road have not changed. Tim Perez and the DNC still cheating, still colluding with the media, still pretending that that 80% of the country is with Joe Biden and not Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders said it last night. He has 4 million individual donations at an average of 18 bucks. Unprecedented. In, in, he, he outdid himself from the last time. It's just, it's a growing movement. And if you could get a fair election, all those millions, all those people are gonna converge. There's nobody, there's no community in America that is going to pull more for Bernie Sanders 
Nobody is going to pull more for Bernie Sanders than Bernie Sanders' people when push comes to shove. Is that a bias? Am I biased? N- no, I, I don't think so. I don't think that... I don't think I'm, I'm a Bernie... I guess right now I'm probably the biggest Bernie booster of any commentator, right? Because I've said it from the beginning that Bernie, it's either right from the beginning. I said it, you know, when I first started doing this. It's going to be Bernie Sanders before he announced it's Bernie Sanders as the nominee or four more years of Trump. I haven't changed. Right? Even when they, they even when they, they've ruled him out already, right? He's had a heart attack. Hey, fuck it. Hey, he's out. Right? All the jerk offs online saying that shit, right? Mainstream media, oh he's out. No, he can't win. I, I stuck with it because because he sticks with it. There's no doubt about it. So is that bias? No. That's just judgment of character. Right? It's 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 viewing the character of the individual and saying, that's the guy right there. That's the consistent guy right who I mean look you I me the guy down the block the other you know these these LARPer guys we love the the controversy and the and the who's fucking who stuff right because it's funny right it's humor but Bernie Sanders doesn't go down those rabbit holes he did somewhat to the Russiagate stuff but not really he went right back to policy well the Democrats are screaming you know Russiagate Russia Russia Right? He was screaming, you know, get money out of politics, get money out of politics, Green New Deal. Right? So Bernie Sanders in, uh, in Iowa, February 2nd, he's got to knock the skin off the ball. He's got all the, all the, he's got all the, the very far left, Alessandro Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, and Ilan Omar. They're going to rally. They're going to rally around Trump, uh, around Sanders. Hollywood should come out for Bernie. Uh, but they're, again, they're cowards. Uh, so, so I watched it, so you don't have to watch it. You can watch 27 minutes of me or two hours of, of them. So, we'll see where it all leads. Am I optimistic? Do I think that Bernie can overcome the margin of cheating? Somebody asked me that yesterday. They say, well, who's going to win? Who's going to be the president? I, you know, again, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it looks, it looks, I, I would have to, if I had a bet, if I was a betting man, I would say Trump is the front runner. Trump, the president of the United States, is probably in the 85 percentile right now of winning. If Bernie enters the ring, I would put it at 60-40, Bernie. Anybody else, I would put Trump over the 50 percentile. Anybody. If Bernie Sanders is the candidate, I would say it's Bernie has a 60-40 chance of winning. And Trump is, a, is, a, is the most unbelievable candidate in history, right? You don't know what he's going to say. I mean, it's, Bernie Sanders is going to be the communist of the, you know, the, the, the American communist, right? That, uh, Trump is going to paint them unbelievably, right? So... We'll see. That, I think that would, if anybody cares for entertainment value, Bernie Trump is the, is the fight of the century, man. And I'll be there, man. I want to fucking cover that shit, man. Don't give me fucking Joe Biden and watch Trump just smear the shit out of the guy. Marcus Conti reporting.